Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Here I am. Hi. Okay, so today, one of our viewers, OT445, has asked for me to do a show on garlic. So that's what we're doing, and that's what you're looking at right now. This is the garlic patch on into the rest of the stuff. That's onions, and beyond that is tomatoes. That's peaches. One of the peach trees. That's a bow. They're hard to grow. Well, there you go, Bo. Let's just be silly for the camera. Gotcha. All right. So, anyway, this is garlic. This is garlic. Garlic is an aluminium. It is a member of the onion family. Onions, garlic, leeks, shallots, they're all the same family. This is a garlic bulb. From that is going to become a flower full of seed. You eat the bottom and grow the top. So, now let's go into the house and cook with some. All right, we are back in business. Back in business. I know, I know. I'm walking through the house. I'm making you seasick properly. Let me put this on the on the tripod. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Hope I don't shut us off and have to start over. I'm not good at that. And I have so much buku stuff going on today. It's unreal. Now we're going to talk about garlic. Like I said, we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff that uses garlic and we're going to make some wonderful garlic parmesan potatoes and a bunch of other things and the different ways to use garlic. Let me that over here because I am doing something else over there. I've got a lot of orders so I'm doing a lot of stuff. We're going to do a lot of stuff. All right, so first of all, garlic. Okay, this is what you saw growing. All right, see? But notice how these are dead? Garlic has to sit for 30 days after you pick it, before you can eat it. And the reason for that is it has a sulfur enzyme in it that is toxic. It will kill you if it's fresh picked. So if you do pick grow garlic, don't pick it. I mean, don't eat it right away. The way you grow garlic is you're gonna take your head that you buy in the grocery store for a quarter, that paper head. You're gonna take that head and you're going to separate the cloves out of it and then you're going to uh, stick them in the ground in September and then harvest them in June, May or June. If you look real close, I don't know if you can see this, but if you see, see this right here, that is the starter. That's the clove that I stuck in the ground to make this head. All right? And the first thing we're gonna do with these is I cut the top and the bottom off, the root and the top off. So now you've got, this should look a little bit more familiar to you. The fresher the garlic, the sweeter the taste. Now I'm gonna take this, just like it is, and I'm gonna set it in the oven. In a hot oven, now it's in 350. I'm just setting it in there. And I'm gonna forget about it while we go on to other things. Because we're making roasted garlic, which works like a garlic paste. Why spend five bucks for a little bit of tube of garlic paste when you make your own a lot cheaper? When you're buying garlic in the store, hang on, hang on, hang on, there we go, there we go, is that better? Y'all were looking at the floor, look like the camera's pointed at the floor. When you buy garlic in the store, I, I know you can hear me, but I gotta be over here too, so. When you buy garlic in the store, what's gonna happen is, oh good lord, cooking down to nothing, all right. Alright, so we got a head of garlic in the oven. Turn the light on. Head of garlic in the oven. And we're gonna do some other things with garlic. This is just fresh garlic. This is minced garlic that has been um, like vinegared, almost like pickled. Alright, that's you have to do garlic will spoil quickly. Garlic can poison you. So if you're making your own minced garlic, it has to be pressure cooked. You can't water bath it. All right. And then we have garlic powder. 
Now, the only acceptable garlic, I think, in my opinion, is fresh garlic, dried garlic, which is what you buy in the store, um, minced garlic, or garlic powder. If you're buying garlic salt, you get, in this container, say this is garlic salt, it's not, it's garlic powder, but if you get this container of garlic salt, you're going to get this much salt and that much garlic. And it's not even the good salt. We've already talked about salt. That's not the good salt. That's the bad salt. So, and they all have different applications. And so we're going to make several different dishes using all of them, okay? So that you get an idea. Now, because it's in the onion family, you can treat it like an onion. Make sure that's all. Okay, we're going to move up here so you can see me. Okay. So I just took the paper off of it, the peel off of it, this one. And this is going to look different from what you get in the store because these are homegrown. And it's a different variety than what they sell in the store. Although that's what they started with. This one, it, there's the little clove. That's the way I cut it. I cut it wrong. Anyway, get the paper off. That one in the, it has good cloves in it. This one is really one big giant clove. Okay, now some people, when they buy it, they peel them. There we go. There's the cloves. There we go. Now you see some good cloves. This is still good, too. You can eat that. That's good. You can eat all parts of the garlic. You can use the green part of the garlic like you would a chive, a garlic chive. It's really good. Now, a lot of people say they don't like chopping up garlic. It's too hard. Okay, well, I understand that. And you can use a garlic press. However, garlic press looks just like this. You put the clove of garlic in here, put the little hammer down on it, squeeze it, and it comes out the bottom. However, this is a pain in the butt to clean, and you got to get it clean, completely clean. you got to get every little hole. You have to use a toothpick and get every little hole, and use a toothbrush and scrub it, and get every little hole, and toothbrush and I don't have that kind of time. I mean, I do use my press from time to time, but not very often anymore, because the easiest way to do it, besides roasting it and it turns into a paste, is to take your clove, take your knife, Knife. Okay, yeah, not that kind of knife. Okay, you're going to point the blade away from you. Always, whenever you're using a knife, always point the blade and the point away from you or anybody else around you. All right, so you got your clove. Try to find, don't put it on the rounded spot on the back. It's going to have at least one flat side. That's because they're all together, you know. You're going to do that. You're going to put your, the fat into your blade, not the tip, the fat into your blade. On it, set it on there and smack it like a bad child. There you go. And then you can do it again and drag and you've got a garlic paste or a minced garlic. And now we got that one ready to go. Okay, that one's gonna be good and what we're fixing to make with it. Okay, now, sometimes you want the garlic flavor. Well, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. I don't wanna confuse you. First, let's use the chopped garlic. Okay. So, I'm heating up this pan, and I'm just going to put some canola oil in it. You could use olive oil, but this is one of those things you really don't want to use a high-end oil in it. All right. All right. I'm going to let that get warm a minute. Now, a lot of people make the mistake. A lot of people make the mistake of, well, I've watched them do this on TV, and I love that sound. When the garlic goes in, the smell, oh, it's just so wonderful, that sizzling garlic. So they get their pan really hot, and then they throw their garlic in, and oh, I didn't prep my onions, I didn't prep the rest of the veggies. So they're over here doing that, and the garlic's just sizzling away, and they love that smell. And the next thing they know, they look, and it's a dark brown instead of a gold. It should be white and turned to an, a gold color, almost a buttery color, all right? If it turns brown, throw it out. It's burned, and it's no good. It is bitter, it is nasty, oh, it is awful. And it will, you have to wash the pan too because it, the flavors will stay in the pan, the burnt flavor, and it's horrible. Now what we're gonna make right now is some Jamaican rice and peas. Now I've already got my rice cooked. Y'all know I do that in advance. All right, we're not gonna go over that because you can watch that other video on that. All right. And I'm just heating a little oil, I'm gonna put some and because I did a huge batch because I have to have a lot. So I'm going to see how much I got here. I want more. All right, there we go. 
There we go. That's like three cups of rice. Already cooked. Cooked rice. That's going to be Spanish rice next. Not today with you, but yeah, later. Okay, so now I'm going to put my garlic in on top of the rice. Just like that. All right. And to that, we're going to add some coconut milk. Coconut milk in there. It's really good. It's be really good. What happens if you put too much milk and it becomes soup? Add more rice. All right. Uh, some salt. This is kosher. You can use kosher or sea. It doesn't matter. Either one. And I think, I think I'm going to add a little bit of red onion to it. We, you can watch the video on the different colors of onions and the different flavors. Um, red usually cooks out, but this isn't going to cook very long. So it'll give it a little, another, well, it'll get a, give it a layer of flavor, just a little bit, not a lot. Give it a little layer of flavor, and it'll give it a little layer of uh, color, another color in it. Okay, you want this on like a medium low heat so the rice doesn't stick. Put that through. This is so quick, so fast, so easy. And now I'm going to add a can of drained dark red beans, kidney beans. I'm not going to over spice this too much. And the reason is because it's going to be served with um, jerk pork chops, which are very spicy. So I'm not going to overspice this. This is going to be a nice complement to the spice. You see what I'm saying? And we're going to let that go for just a second, and that'll be done. And while that's doing, I'm going to get a pan. I'm, don't go away. I'm right here. Just hang on. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. All right. Let me shut that off because it's done. Isn't that pretty? Jamaican rice and peas. I'm going to throw some parsley on top in a little bit. Or cilantro. Either one. You can also add a little lime juice to that if you want to, but I think that's too much, so I don't do that. Oh, wow, that more I didn't have it on heat. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use whole cloves of garlic like this, but we're not going to smash or anything because we're going to pull them out after we're done cooking with them. We just want the garlic flavor. We're going to make like a flavored oil. In fact, in fact, we're going to do it over here. Let's come over here. Come over here. You with me? Hope so. Can you see that? Can you? Where are we at? Where are we at? Can you see that? Okay, you can see that. Alright. Okay, so. We're going to use the garlic flavored oil in the Swiss steak. I don't want the garlic in there. I just want the oils in there. So, it's got some canola oil in here still where I was frying steaks earlier. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw three cloves in there on a medium high heat. And I've already cooked one batch of steak. I've got another batch to go. In fact, I'll, why don't I just do that with you watching and then you can see how to do it. How about that? How about that, Lynn? Am I crooked? Oh Lord, we're all crooked up, aren't we? How's that, better? I think so. Are you still with me? I hope so. This isn't going to be a short video today. It's going to be kind of a complicated video. Okay, so let's heat that, add a little bit more oil. We're going to heat that back up. Now, what I have done is, that, in that. All right, what I have done is, and I know you see all this, that's because I'm fixing to do, uh, I've got, it's time to start doing cheesecakes. Oh, but I need that for our next thing, for our Parmesan potatoes. 
I don't need that. Just need that for the potatoes. Okay, you're gonna love those too. Those are good. Those are real good. And super, super easy. You can do them in the microwave, you can do them in the oven, or you can do them uh, on top of the stove, or on the grill even. So, I love those. They're my, one of my favorite go-to potato dishes, and everybody loves them. And they're so easy. Okay, this is flour with salt and pepper in it. That's all that's in it. Just flour, salt, and pepper on steak, on round steak. And I buy the malaise cut that's real thin, and the reason is I don't like tough steak. And these are just popping. If you were here, you could, they'll pop like a popcorn kernel if you leave them in there long enough. Now, have you ever bought garlic at the store? And I just forgot to get some to show you that, but I mean, you know what that looks like at the store. And you peel it off, peel the paper off, and you slice it, and there's a green thing in the center of it. Okay, that garlic has already sprouted. It's going to become another garlic, all right? It um, is still good to eat, but you want to peel that green center part out because that's very, very, very bitter. All right, so we're just, again, infusing this into the oils. But we're not going to throw these garlic away. They're still good. We're going to use these in something else. Okay, so that's all it takes is just a little bit. You don't want to cook them. You're not cooking the garlic. You're just getting the oils. As soon as they get hot, they'll emit the oils out of them. And you can tell because they turn, I don't know if you can see them, but they're very hot. They start turning a little clear, just like onions. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little breaded little cutlets in here. And a whole bunch of them on there. Notice I'm using the pan that the steaks come in from the grocery store. I don't have to wash that. I can just throw it in the trash. Common sense cooking, ladies. Common sense. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I got gentlemen that watch too, so common sense cooking. I'm feeling much better. They're going to put a heart monitor on me. Uh, those of you that have contributed to my fund to help pay for medical expenses, I appreciate it. It's hard when you don't have insurance. And I'm looking at close to 10 grand worth of medical coming my way. Still not cleared to go back to work, so although I work all the time, so this is a busy time of year on the farm. Everything's going in, everything, you know, getting cleaned up. You gotta thin out peaches. If you have a peach tree, if you plant a peach tree and you have peaches, you have just like with tomatoes, you got two choices. You can have a big, pretty loaded peach tree full of peaches. Full of little bitty peaches that are little. They'll taste good, but they'll be tiny. Okay, see, this just goes in the trash. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of that and just sprinkle like this, because this will help make a gravy later into the oils. Okay, there you go. That's plenty. I'm right here. I'm just going to step away behind you. I didn't go nowhere. Okay, so garlic. And I know, flour makes a mess everywhere, but that's okay. That's why they invented a broom. Garlic. Oh, well, there you go. Or you can just use your shirt. For garlic, uh, when you buy it at the store, hope you're listening, I'm just washing my hands. When you buy it at the store, make sure the paper doesn't just flake off into a dozen little pieces. That's old. That's very, very old garlic. It's going to be a little bit more bitter, not as good. Garlic in its pure state, whole, is very, 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 very sweet. Problem is, people cut it up too small. The smaller you cut it, the smaller the pieces, the stronger and more bitter it gets. You get that garlic, garlicky taste that a lot of people just do not like that smell or that taste. I personally love it, but I'm married to an Italian, so there you go. If you eat it raw, if you eat it raw, like take a piece of bread, a little butter on it, put some raw cloves in it, or cloves like this, or just use cloves like that in it, and eat it like a sandwich. It is so good for your heart. Plus, it kill, it's a natural fungicide. So if you have like nail fungus, or 
athlete's foot or any kind of fungus in your body, it will take care of that too. Get real. Trust me. I know. Not because I've done it, but my dad did. Okay. So this, we're going to turn down to low and leave that alone. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Yeah, that's like watching grass grow. We don't do that here, do we? We got way too much other... I told you I had a lot to do today. Y'all came at the right time. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take canned sauce and turn it into a homemade marinara using our fresh garlic. That's doing well. It's starting the paper starting. You only leave it in there until it turns brown and soft. The paper will burn. It'll look like it burned. It's okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open these. Hopefully, we're going to open these. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And I could use my big commercial one, but that's a real pain in the butt. Now, what I'm going to do with this is, you'll, you'll see, but we're going to give it a homemade flavor to it. It's okay to start with a base and make it your own. That's okay. That works. People, you know, if you don't tell them, a lot of times they won't know. But you can definitely taste the difference between a homemade sauce and a jar sauce. Easy peasy. That's no brainer. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to open these jars so you don't have to stand here and watch. And I don't have to talk to you that much. And i got to go get a can of tomatoes out of the pantry. So hang on. I'll be right back. Hang on. All right. Now we're back. And I got almost all the cans open. There's quite a bit of cursing involved with that. So I really didn't want to try to have to hear that. I have two commercial can openers. But I don't like either one of those either. I like, I'm old school. I just like a hand stuff crank can opener. And because I try to keep this as real as I can for you guys. Just adding a little bit of extra water from that one. Don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. What I just did. Don't use your hand to do that. Because I want a little extra water in this because I, I need a lot of sauce. All right, so. All right, so now we've got all four cans in here, and it's on um, a low heat, it's on like a simmer. Now I'm going to add a can of diced tomatoes. This is my one of my this is my all time favorite diced tomato. It is garlic and olive oil. Come, but we're going to add more garlic to it too because I promised you that. Okay. Now we could use the garlic that I used over there with the steak. We could use that if I wanted to, but because this has garlic in it and I can't get it open. Ay, caramba! Oh, chingly. That's Texas slang. Don't worry about it. Some of you are going to be laughing because I said that. Ay, caramba, chingly. Come on. Christ. So now this is just a can of diced tomatoes we're going to add to the cans of sauce that I put in there. You can use jar sauce. You can use your favorite sauce. I like the, the I prefer the Del Monte can sauce. And the one, I, I don't like the traditional sauce. Please don't ever buy a, a, a canned or jarred meat sauce. Add your own meat. This is not going to have any meat because it's going, we're going to be adding meat to it. So, okay. So, all right. So now I'm going to add minced garlic. I'm just going to get a fork. Now sometimes, another thing about cooking with garlic, sometimes when you cook with garlic, particularly with tomatoes, uh, vinegars, the acid in the vinegar or the tomatoes or the citrus, like if you're making a, a, a pico de gallo or something like that that's fresh or a chavese, what will happen is the garlic will get kind of a bluey green color to it. Uh, sometimes maybe even a purple. Usually it's a bluey green color. And it doesn't look good at all. It's fine. That's just the acid in the vinegars or the tomatoes or the citrus fruit, like limes, interacting with the acids that are in, in the sugars in the garlic. That's what causes that. It's okay. It's okay. It won't hurt you. It doesn't taste any bad. 
doesn't affect the taste. It just looks kind of uppy, but that's okay. Okay, so I just put a big forkful in there. Now, this when you make sauce, whether it's from scratch or a doctored sauce like this, a shortcut sauce, this is the best time to use up veggies from the fridge that are kind of a little bit past their prime. This is a zucchini. Look, see how it's already kind of wrinkly and stuff? So this would go, this will go in here perfect. Save the end for the chickens. So I'm just gonna cut it into little bite-sized pizzas so it goes further, you know? What's this called? Walking the knife. How do you cut? Do you fight the knife or do you guide the knife? Who does the cutting, you or the knife? The knife. I'm helping you in case you hadn't seen that video on knives, on cutting, on how to use a knife correctly without killing yourself. All right, and I'm gonna add some mushrooms because we are just avid mushroom lovers. And again, uh, one of the things with my heart attack is that I'm low in potassium. And mushrooms have a lot of potassium. And I'm cutting the stem off. And then I'm just cutting each uh, mushroom in half and then rough chopping it into chunks like that. You don't want it cut fine. And I use the stem. I just break the stem up. A lot of people throw the stems out. Don't do that. You can just, it pops right out. It's the same thing, but break it up like that. If you don't want to chop it, you can do this. Look, mushrooms are the easiest thing in the world. Have the kids do it to help. Have them put a chair up here and give them a bowl and the thing of mushrooms and say, could you break these up for me? And then let them break it. Don't let them throw them directly into the sauce because you never know where their hands have been. And number one, make sure they wash their hands. But number two, go, and then you'll have sauce everywhere. They'll start dive bombing it. Uh, when it comes to mushrooms, never wash a mushroom. You wipe it off with a towel if it's really bad or your hand. But you never wash a mushroom. You'll lose the mushroom texture. I'm just going to keep adding mushrooms. So, so far we have four cans of sauce, a can of diced tomatoes, some uh, a, a giant heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. Leave that out of the way. Uh, zucchini, mushrooms. This is fresh picked spinach from the garden that's been picked and washed. So I might as well throw some spinach in there. I'm going to use some of this in the shells anyway, so I don't want to use a whole lot of it. But it makes your sauce go further too. The more veggies you put in it, the further it'll go. Some people like carrots in their sauce too. You can do that. Although if you're going to use carrots, I would suggest you saute them first. Oh, I didn't add any onion to it. I should have added onion first. Oh well. Not that I need. Because we started with a jar sauce, because we started with a jar sauce, I'm not going to add any salt because it's going to have plenty of salt already in it. I will, though, add some black pepper to it. I'm just cutting up fresh spinach. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? And spinach is just about ready to go out of season. So if you like fresh spinach, now's the time to buy it because it's going out of season. It's a cold weather plant. Doesn't like the heat. So now's the time to go to the farmer's market and buy it. I don't have any left to sell. Don't ask me. I knew that question was coming next. What I do have coming out of the garden, yeah, well, I just planted okra yesterday, so we'll be doing gumbos and stuff later on in the summer. That's good. Just a little bit. There's that can grow the chickens. I'm saying. All right, put this in the fridge. Keep your mushrooms refrigerated. I know I tell you there's certain things you don't have to refrigerate. Mushrooms are not one of them. They need to stay refrigerated. We are fortunate enough to have a mushroom farm about 35 miles from here. So, these are shallots, fresh picked from the garden. That's why they look the way they do. You can use green onion if you want to. You can use regular onion if you want to. I just want this part of it. I don't want the onion part. I just want this part. Remember to always curl your fingers under, like that when you're cutting. 
You can't cut yourself when it goes like that. You can when it goes like that. Okay. All right, so then now, what do I need? Oh, I know. So now I'm gonna take a little Italian seasoning, just your Plano, no salt, just dried herbs. You can make your own. I'll be making my own soon. I just cut a bunch of rosemary back and I'm gonna have to cut the basil back too. So I'll be making my own pretty soon, but right now we're using that because it works in a pinch. And it's common sense. That's what I'm looking for. And the pièce de résistance. Although I guess I shouldn't have spoke French to you, should I? If we're cooking this marinara. Just a nice big gulp. <sighs> yummy, 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 tummy, tummy, tummy. Gives it a nice richness. And I don't know where you are, but it is after uh, after twelve here, so. Afternoon, so don't get mad at me for doing that. I don't know, some of you may be old enough to remember Justin Wilson. He was an old Cajun cook. He cooked with lots of wine. Lots of wine. He had the gallo big jugs, you know, with the handle on them. He loved wine. And he would cook with tons of it. And anyway, he would always take one for himself. One for the pot, one slug for himself. One for the pot, slug for the chef. You so funny. Hang on just a second. I'm gonna move you. Hang on just a second. You, we're okay. We're okay. Don't try this at home. I'm a trained professional. Actually, I do want you to try this. Hold on, jingling. That's hot. Okay. So now we have our garlic, toasted roasted garlic. Oh, it smells so good. Now this, you can just let it cool down and you can set it in the counter on, in the cabinet just like this and it'll last for a long time. Or you can put it in the fridge. I don't like putting it in the fridge because then you lose the whole point of doing it this way. Let's see if I can get it cut open. This is one big clove. I can't get a clove out of it. It's too hot. No, this one's too hot. Anyway. It becomes like a pain and you just squeeze it like that. It's really good. I should let it cool. But it didn't. So. Alright. So now. Oh, the potatoes. We didn't do potatoes. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. We'll do potatoes. Well, okay. I'll just tell you about the potatoes. Right I mean, I have to do the potatoes, but not right second. Okay. So you're going to take red potatoes. Your little new potatoes. You're going to take these. And you're going to cut them into chunks, like wedges, or chunks, either one. Not real small, about like that. You know, bite size, but you know, you want them kind of big, all right? And anyway, you're gonna get your pan full of those, get a bowl full of those, four or five, depending on how big they are. You can leave them this size if you want to, that's fine too. I probably will, because it's easier. Uh, but whatever you do, Make them all the same size, so they'll cook evenly. If you decide that you want to leave big ones after you always cut little ones, then the big, the little ones will be cooked and the big ones won't be. They'll be hard, so you've got to cook them all at one time. So then what you're going to do is you're going to do this. You're going to put the potatoes in a big bowl. Hang on. You're going to put the potatoes in a big bowl, all right? Yep. Now in this, I would use garlic powder. If I were going to add garlic to it, I would add garlic powder. This is the kind of stuff you put garlic powder in. So if you don't want to see or take bite into the piece of garlic. And if you don't like to, if you're worried about somebody biting into a piece of garlic, then always pull the plums out. It's just like a bay leaf. You know, you most people pull the bay leaves, which reminds me. Why not? Throw a couple of bay leaves in there. Why not? There you go. Right, that one got wet, so we'll go ahead and use that. We'll sacrifice that one for the team. So you're gonna fill this bowl full of your chopped potatoes, okay? Now, if you have the Hidden Valley Ranch powder, like to make your own 
dressing or dip. Use the dressing. I don't like the dip one. Uh, there's two of them. There's one that says salad dressing, one that says for dip. I don't like the dip one for this. I like the salad dressing one. You just sprinkle it all over the potatoes and then use your hands. Make sure they're all coated. Then you're going to add um, sour cream, a couple big tablespoons of sour cream. Mix that all in. Make sure they're all coated. Then you're going to just throw in a bunch of Parmesan cheese. Make sure it's all mixed up. Then you're going to lay them out on a cookie sheet or a low-sided pan. And you can, you can then put them in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. Real high oven, about 375, 30 minutes. You can do them on top of the stove. If you do them on top of the stove, make sure you cook them in a little oil. Or you can do them in the microwave. Put them in a microwave safe bowl just like they are. Throw them in the microwave for uh, about five minutes. Stir them. Throw them back in for another five minutes. They're done. So there you go. That's garlic done several different ways. Starting from the garden on how we grow garlic. All right. So now you learned how to grow garlic. You know how to roast garlic. You know how to use garlic. You know not to use garlic salt. You learned how to make a Swiss steak. You learned how to make garlic roasted uh, Parmesan potatoes. And you learned how to make a cheap marinara that's going to taste like you've been slaving over a stove all day. I hope you enjoyed today. If you did, like and share. Don't be afraid to comment below because I use what you tell me to do. If you email me or comment or Facebook me, that's how I know what to make the show up. Today's show shout out goes to OT445. For she wanted to know about garlic. I hope I answered some questions. I hope it taught you something new. And I hope, again, remember, it's all common sense cooking. Just like with what, all the stuff I put in here. Okay, if you say, my family doesn't like mushrooms, what does common sense tell you? Don't put mushrooms in it. Duh. All right? Have a blessed week. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you again next week.